Hello and welcome to another episode where we attempt to fall asleep but we succeed because we have the help of Habibi Spice, me. Tonight we are going to be putting your life back on track. You have a lot of problems. And I am not going to be the one fixing your life. But I am going to be the one telling you to fix your life. Because you are the one in the driver's seat. And I am just passenger driving, backseat driving, or even standing on the road with a sign that they make a left. I have the sign, I have the arrow. But it is up to you to turn the wheel to the left. Are you able to? Or is your wheel jammed? Your wheel is locked. There is something in the engine maybe that is broken. Or the axle that is not turning the wheels properly. That is for you to answer. Not for me to answer. What keep you up? Your loud neighbor? Go knock at his door. He opened door. Shut up, Habibi. Boom, problem solved. Next. See how easy that was? No argument. He keep making noise, go back up. Shut up, Habibi. He's going to be like, who are you? Who am I? Who are you making noise above me? Shut up. Boom. You can sleep now. Thank me later. The inspiration tonight will be coming from The Urban Monk, which is a book I read here before. And it is about thriving. In a bus is a busy, in a busy city life, being able to find solace within the noise, being able to find meditation in a place that does not promote meditation, it does not facilitate it. But facilitating meditation comes from you, from you prioritizing meditation. Just like you prioritized scrolling on TikTok every night. Imagine instead of sitting in bed and doing this, you meditate. Because when you're doing this, time runs fast. Scroll after scroll after scroll. You are feeding your brain bullshit. Except it's my content. If it's my content, you're not bullshitting yourself. Keep that in mind. So the section I will be reading today is called Getting Back on the Horse. Before I read it, how can you get back on the horse if you never fall off the horse? You can say, if I never fall off, there is no reason for me to stay on the horse. If I never fall off, there is no reason for me to get back on the horse because I have always been on it. But what if your horse is tired and when you fell off, it gave it this little break where it has to circle back and wait for you to climb back on. It took a deep breath. That is what you need. Or maybe you need a different horse. Or maybe just get a car like a normal person. In the last nine chapters, you remember when we read nine chapters? We've explored the landscape of many of the lifestyle issues that are tapping our life force and draining our vitality. We've taken a deep dive into each of them to unlock your personal power through exercises, hacks, and a better understanding of how to navigate the choppy waters. 
How do these impact the subject of meaning and purpose? How do these impact the subject of meaning and purpose? Do they help us regain our connection with life itself and therefore put us back in the flow of the universe? Let's look at each quickly here. Stress. Being saddled by too much stress impacts the immune system and the nervous system. It messes with our metabolism. It cuts flow to the frontal part of the brain, which is the, the part associated with higher moral reasoning and the critical thinking capacity that makes us a human. Being locked out of this part of the brain keeps us in the animal brain or fight or flight and needing to belong. Well, not everybody needs to be long. Some people need to be short. <laughs> Looking for meaning when stuck in the primal stuff is almost impossible. We have to clear the path for the brain to fire and activate our higher spiritual faculties. Then we don't look for meaning. It presents itself to us from above. Time. Time connects us all. Time connects us to all the power in the universe. Our better understanding of what it is and how we can exist within the flow of it will liberate us in ways we can't even imagine. Time is one of our greatest teachers and an ally in life. It is the anchor of our being. When we squander time, we waste our life force because we are disconnected from our essential selves. We spend it frivolously and speak of being bored. Remember scrolling on TikTok? That is frivolous behavior. The urban monk masters his interface with time and finds meaning and purpose once he's met his essential self outside of linear time. Stopping time and finding eternity is the daily practice we must master. You know when you're watching a movie, it always feels different than real life. Somebody is looking at a sign on the road, standing in the middle of the road, standing in the middle of the road looking at the shop sign at the side of the road. In a movie, this shot could take two minutes, but it could only represent a few seconds in real life. Or this shot could take one second and it could mean so long. Long story short, because a movie shows you one certain shot, it creates a painting of reality. A permanent painting that you can look at. It creates a moment that has meaning. Because every shot is intended to tell a story. In your life, every shot can have a story as well. You just have to give it the right meaning. This is how you stop time, because time is inevitably marching, just like your horse. And if you fall off it, it's okay. Energy. This is the currency of life, as you may recall. A chi energy can be cultivated into shen. Yes, this becomes the juicy stuff that helps us connect with the life all around us. It is the fabric of consciousness that we share with all the life around us. It is something we can enhance and refine with our practice. So it's talking about Qi, spelled Q-I, which we haven't read about in this book, but I'm sure he provides more. A flickering light bulb won't cut it we must come to life. 
flickering, flickering light bulb usually is a defective light bulb or a problem with the electricity. If you are driving the car, you are the light bulb and the car is the electricity. You cannot shine if the car is broken, but if the car is broken, it is up to you to turn on that switch. Considering light bulbs turn on their own switches, very autonomous light bulbs. Sleep, just like what we're about to do now. What goes up must come down, and sleep is where we heal, on the soul level. It's where our subconscious minds connect with the collective unconscious and where we derive meaning from our day's events. Most of us are so far behind in sleep depth that we always feel like something's missing. Correcting this and connecting with our daily small deaths helps us tap into the web of life. When we have adequately slept, our baseline anxiety starts to go away and we regain the focus and perspective to find answers for ourselves. We feel great and our life force radiates a sense of comfort and ease. We must sleep to be full. So what are you waiting for? You must sleep to be full. You heard the man. Stagnant lifestyle. Sitting around pondering our existence was one part of a monk's life. The rest of it was fetching water and chopping wood daily. Life was active and the hills were steep. Life required us to move our bodies, sweat out in the sun, brave the elements, and lift heavy things. Like your mom. This has been the case since our species stumbled out of the first ice age. Now is the time, now is the first time in human history that we've become so stagnant, sitting around most of the day. Many of us are lost and disconnected from our primal, primal roots. Getting moving is essential to unlocking our vital energy and activating key genes that code for growth and longevity. When the body doesn't move, it signals a shutdown and makes the mind dull, leading to a sense of disconnection and unease. Purpose doesn't always hit you over the head. It comes naturally once you have turned our lights back on by getting back in the flow of movement. This is a very fancy way of saying, move your ass, Habibi. Go outside for a walk. You wake up early, go for a walk. You came home from work, go for a walk. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Two minutes, walk around, go down the sidewalk and come back. Diet. Good food powers the brain and activates higher spiritual centers to wake us up. Bad food does the opposite. It lulls us to sleep and messes with our energy flow. Getting on the right side of this question equation is critical. You can't eat junk and expect to find some higher purpose in life. You are what you eat on all levels, which includes physical, mental, psychological, spiritual, energetic, and more. An urban monk curates her experience of life to ingest good stuff and avoid stuff that will slow, that will slow her down and burden her system on any level. You become what you ingest and use that fuel to further awaken. So everything you're taking in from TikTok to conversations with colleagues and peers and friends, you ingest that and it goes into your subconscious and then you turn that into whatever you are right now. Potentially not where you want to be, but you can change it. So diet does not only mean what you put on your plate but what you put on your mental plate. You, you hear the expression, 
I have a lot on my plate right now. Well, maybe you can keep the amount of things on your plate, but you just have to change the ingredients. Nature. As the shamanic teacher Alberto V. Oldo says, in the West, we are the only people who see ourselves outside of the garden. The perception that we were evicted from a natural paradise has cut us off from the profound respect for the natural world that is bred into so many cultures. We tear through forests, mine through mountains, pollute rivers, and fill the earth with plastic shit we didn't really need. Disconnecting from nature pulls us from the umbilical cord of the universe and separates us from all the other life to which we are bound. We do this and then we go to workshops at mountain retreats trying to find meaning and purpose when the first stop should be reconnecting with the natural world in our own backyards. We seek these journeys that are supposed to show us a higher sense of existence and meaning. But the biggest journey we can take is a journey inward. You cannot look for yourself away from yourself. You might find yourself in other places you might find similarities to your soul in other places, but that already exist within you. It's like going to a trampoline park, but you have a trampoline in your living room. I play ping pong. I have a ping pong table in my building down there. I play with my neighbor sometimes. How stupid would it be if me and him, instead of playing in the building, pay money hourly to play at a place that has ping pong table? It would be highly stupid, idiotic, irresponsible, dumb, shallow. You want more? It's okay. So don't look for something that is right in front of you. Don't look for it somewhere else. Maybe your vision is obstructed. Okay, Habibi, now go to sleep. Stop being dramatic about life. Okay? I will see you next time.